it's Saturday. I just woke up, washed my face, my skin is still damp. I'm gonna chat with you guys about how to use tranexamic acid in your skincare routine, an ingredient used to improve hyperpigmentation. Have not had coffee yet. Hyperpigmentation and discoloration. It also has been shown to improve redness. Anyway, skin's still damp. So I'm using the Polish Choice Discoloration Repair Serum. It has tranexamic acid in it. I'm just gonna do a pump and massage it in while the skin is still damp. That way it enhances penetration. Now, tranexamic acid is a gentle enough ingredient that you can use it with other active ingredients. It doesn't like inactivate them. Typically doesn't cause too much irritation, although obviously that's going to vary from person to person on an individual basis. But you can pretty much layer on over any other ingredient. That being said, the more products and ingredients you start trying to layer over things, I'm gonna do one more pump, the greater the risk of irritation. So I suggest if you're buying tranexamic acid over the counter to look for a product that has a few skin brightening ingredients, things like kojic acid, for example, pair really nicely with tranexamic acid for hitting multiple angles of the pathways that lead to hyperpigmentation. Um, so it's pretty much absorbed, but critical is the sunscreen for the morning. I'm gonna put the Cetaphil Daily Facial Moisturizer with sunscreen SPF 35. This is a um, chemical sunscreen, there's no cast. I really love it, it's very moisturizing. Um, so this type, of pro this type of product, this ingredient, tranexamic acid, you can use it twice a day uh, to derive maximal benefits, but if you have really sensitive skin, you find that it's irritating, burns, stings, try just using it once a day. You can still derive benefit that way. It may just take longer to work. So anyways, I'm gonna put the sunscreen on and that's basically it. You thought there was more? <laughs> the best part is coming up though. That is, that is the coffee. Ah, guess who's back? Haven't had it in a while. My four Siggy. There's something about the Four Sigmatic coffee that gets me in the mood for fall. I have you guys under my arm like, like a baby. I have this long tripod that I'm holding anyway. My blood type is coffee. I like coffee all types of ways. I don't really do cold brew, not because I don't like it, but because when there's a cold beverage, I inhale it too quickly. So the heat from hot coffee slows me down. <laughs> uh... Hey guys, I'm on my way to Kroger to pick up a few things and I have been racking up points on the Drop app ever since Kroger was added. Today's video is in partnership with the Drop app. What is the Drop app? It's the easiest to use rewards app that gives you points back when you make purchases at your favorite retailers, places like Sephora, Amazon, and then those points you can redeem for gift cards within the app, like gift cards to Amazon. It's really easy to get the points too. I mean, you don't even have to think about it. You can earn points by shopping at your favorite retailers within the app itself, or you can take advantage of exclusive card link deals. Um, so when you sign up, you wanna make sure that you link a credit or debit card so you take advantage of those because those deals, they just go automatically when you use your credit card to shop at those given retailers. But you don't even have to spend money to earn points back on within the Drop app. You can do little surveys, they have fun games. I mean, whenever you're bored, you can just be getting points that later you can redeem for gift cards. Really, really smooth. There's no red tape, no receipt scanning, coupon clipping. I mean, it's very, very easy. I get so many points back now that uh, Kroger has been added because it's a card linked offer. So when I buy my groceries with my credit card, I'm getting points back that I can then redeem for gift cards. Shopping within the Drop app is really easy. You just go into the app, um, go on the shop page, tap on the offer that you're interested in. It will take you to that retailer's website. Then you shop within the app on the retailer's website as you ordinarily would. You complete the checkout process as you ordinarily would. And then Drop automatically adds those points into your account that you can then later redeem for gift cards. When you sign up for the Drop app, do not forget to link your credit or debit card so that you can add those card linked offers and earn really seamlessly. Just tap on your account and hit the plus icon to make sure that your card is linked and then you can begin to add those card linked offers. So to kickstart your earnings, go ahead and download the Drop app using my link in the description box on the App Store or Google Play. Use my code and Drop right now is giving you guys 10,000 points 
free when you earn your first 1,000 points within the app. That's $10 worth of points. All you have to do is get the app, download it, earn 1,000 points, which is super easy to do, and then you get free $10 worth of points. It's actually the perfect time to get started with the Drop app because it's the one time of year where the perks get exponentially greater during Drop's birthday week, happening August 23rd through the 29th. Offers are boosted all week long. New offers are added daily. We're talking five, 10, sometimes 15% back on offers like Sephora, Nike, and more. Yeah, there are going to be a whole lot of chances to win a lot of extra rewards points on top of your regular points during this time. And Drop's doing a 5 million points giveaway. Five winners will wake up to $5,000 worth of Drop points in their account and many other smaller prizes just for completing any offer on Drop this week between August 23rd and the 29th. So thank you Drop for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I just filmed a Shop With Me video in the vitamin shop. I have not been in there in a while. Who remembers when I used to live actually over by that vitamin shop and I would go in there a fair amount to get, I can't remember what I would get in there. I think some sort of a energy bar, I'm not sure. Shopping in there, I the other day I found this YouTuber. I can't remember his name. I'm gonna put it here in text, but he does like these kind of deep dive documentary style videos. He's very talented as far as his editing and things. He makes really good videos. And he did this one video about the history of those Bang Energy drinks. The founder of Bang Energy is like quite a character. And apparently there's some history that he had another like supplement company and it was really like shady or something. I don't know, you gotta, you gotta watch the documentary. This guy does really good little documentaries about, it's all about like stuff in the fitness industry, which I just think is really interesting. But this guy, He's a newer, I think newer YouTuber. He's young, but I mean, his videos are really good. I don't know, maybe he's like a, in film school or something. Um, his videos are quite good. Enjoyable to watch. Plus he has a British, he's, I think he's British, has a British accent. And you guys always sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Comment below, when you watch American YouTubers, can you tell like what part of the US we're from? I mean, I watch a lot of YouTubers in the South, from the South, and I always wonder how their accent comes across to people either, you know, in the UK or just outside of the US who don't maybe are learning English. A lot of people watch YouTube, you know, who are learning a new language. An accent from like Northeast or Boston. <laughs> Yeah, Massachusetts, their accent is very unique. Or New Jersey, they have a very unique accent. I'll never forget, I grew up in the South, and one summer I went to this ballet intensive camp in Connecticut, and they had um, a lot of people come to the camp from Massachusetts, and that was the first time I had ever heard that accent before. I could not understand them. <laughs> I mean, they were talking really fast. I could not understand them. In the South, people speak very slowly. In the Northeast, they speak very fast. And that was the first time I had really been around a lot of people from the Northeast. But that being said, there are certain Southern accents from very more rural areas of the South where it can be really, really difficult to understand what they're saying as well, unless you're from there and you're familiar with it. Used to kid. Used to could is a phrase that makes perfect sense to me. I don't understand why it's not used by more people. It's, it describes a skill that you once possessed but no longer do. I mean, it's, it's the perfect phrase, used to could. I used to could. I can't anymore. I could at one time. I used to could. Perfect sense. But one thing I've noticed is that people from the UK say reckon. I reckon. And reckon is not something that everybody in the US says. Reckon is like like an old timer, something you would hear in the, in the South from an old timer. I reckon, I reckon. <laughs> but it's not used that commonly. Like it, I, I noticed younger people in the UK saying reckon a lot. For example, that guy that I reacted to his tanning advice, I noticed he says reckon a lot. I reckon. But, so you wouldn't hear somebody say reckon here unless they were like from 
maybe the South or Texas, they would say, they say reckon here. I reckon, I reckon. But they're not, it's not a widespread thing to say. I mean, I, you will, for example, if you go to New York, you're not going to find somebody being like, I reckon. Unless they're British and, you know, using reckon the way they do. But you're not going to find a New Yorker who's like, I reckon. It's a very southern thing to say. All right. In we go. Well, well, well. If it isn't the kind opportunist, now that we no longer have bulk bins, kind has swooped in with these little tubs of specialty nuts, dried fruit. Seven dollars. Um, don't quote me, but I feel as though Costco is a much better deal. Speak of the devil. Bang energy. You have to be 18 years of age and older. Is that the requirement? Good lord. How much caffeine does this have? I'm curious. Well, while they've made it abundantly clear that you have to be 18 years of age and older to consume this and that there's no juice in it. Um, they're not really obvious with the caffeine content. I can't find it on any of the... This is a new brand to me of what appears to be vegan foods. And the spicy, smoky, dreamy mac actually looks pretty good. Because the noodles are... The corkscrew kind of. I always enjoy those. It gets a medium as far as spice. Very, very porridge. Mm. Those are always kind of a rip-off, but... Garlic vegan mayonnaise with caramelized onions. Mmm, that sounds good. They have a back no mayonnaise, a bacon one, and they have a variety of sauces, too. Alright, you guys. <laughs> Y'all are in for a treat. You'll recall last weekend I went to the library and I got this awesome vegan slow cooker book. It's a cookbook of different vegan slow cooker recipes, but in the back it has a section of staples that include things like how to make your own vegan sausage to use in the slow cooker recipes. Anyways, one of the recipes is for an easy DIY meltable vegan cheese. So I'm going to make it and you guys are going to suffer through the process with me. It has some interesting ingredients, including this that I got on the Amazonian by Druid's Grove. It's lactic acid. going to make it tangy. And it also has tapioca starch and carrageenan to make it thick and stretchy. Um, so this should be fun. All right, we're going to use two cups of water. And some whole unsalted cashews. This is half a cup of cashews. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I get this nutritional yeast on the Amazonian. It's seriously the best nutritional yeast. This cow, cow innovative, whatever. It's very good. Thick flakes, nice flavor, delicious. And we're gonna do two teaspoons of sea salt. I cut this on the Amazonian, happy belly. And we're gonna do one and a half teaspoon of the lactic acid. Oh wait, I forgot to add one. Oops, I forgot to add the onion. Let's do that first. Hmm. <laughs> I accidentally inhaled a piece of granulated onion. Oh. All right, now that the onion is properly incorporated, now we're going to do three tablespoons of tapioca starch. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of this kappa carrageenan. This one looks really focused. They specified kappa carrageenan. Kind of reminds me of some sort of a fraternity. <laughs> a cheese fraternity. All right. 
right, now we're gonna bring it over to a saucepan, add it. All right, now we're gonna whisk this over medium heat. Yesterday was customization day for the FabFitFun box. I can't wait for the fall box to come. But it seems like I was just customizing the summer box. <laughs> it's gotten better over the years. It, it, I don't know. It's the kind of thing though that if you really like all of your stuff to match, you probably would find it frustrating because you're like, why would I want a pan that doesn't match my other dishes? But when you're like me <laughs> and you just kind of have a mishmash of random stuff, then it works out. All right, so I let the vegan cheese set up and I'm gonna cut into it and give it a tri try. Hmm. Wow, that's good. It's a little salty. It does not taste like cashews though. It's really good actually. Um, it's almost kind of like a firm cheese. Hmm. Wow, that's really good actually. I really like that. That lactic acid really kind of gives it like a tang. Hmm. I think you could easily tweak this and like add different mix-ins and stuff. I'm curious how it would come out with other nuts too. Just hopped out of the shower, so I'm gonna do the discoloration repair serum again. Skin is still damp, so putting it on at this point will enhance penetration of the tranexamic acid. This Polish Choice product is pretty good, actually. This one, and there's another tranexamic acid serum that is a lot more affordable, I think, from Good Molecules. Good Molecules, of all of the like indie type brands, I have been the most impressed with Good Molecules. Um, they, they have, I don't know, they have some good ones that really are, they're super affordable too. I mean like priced at value, not jacked up the price. Skincare just doesn't need to be expensive is what I'm getting at anyways. You can put this on your neck. Now, tranexamic acid, it's seriously variable as far as the success you're gonna get with it in terms of improving hyperpigmentation because it's a challenging ingredient to work with but overall, it's a very gentle ingredient, so it's fine to use it with other active ingredients. And combining it with other active ingredients kind of maximizes the likelihood of getting improvement in the hyperpigmentation, because you're getting different ingredients that address different arms of the hyperpigmentation. And so in this case, I've got this azelaic acid here. I'm gonna show you guys. You could just put it on right away. Again, the skin is still damp, so and get good penetration of the azelaic acid. Plus this particular formulation of the azelaic acid is pretty moisturizing actually. Um, you don't really need to worry about wait times with things like this. That's a question I get frequently. How much time should we wait in between different serums? <laughs> it doesn't matter, just put them on. All right, now, personally, I feel as though my skin is sufficiently moisturized at this point. I mean, the Polish Choice Serum has good moisturizing ingredients. This has good moisturizing ingredients. I'm actually gonna moisturize my body, though, uh, while it's still damp, that's the best time. Uh, this, I'm almost finished with, it, actually. Yes, I've been loving it. I have been adoring it. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Oh, what a day, you guys. I'm telling you, time, Time flies way too fast. Like, I feel like I just wake up and then it's already time to go to bed. <laughs> and one thing I do, I have to tell you guys, I kind of cheat with my planner. <laughs> Most of you probably think that I like, I'm a really planner oriented person in my planner that I write stuff down in, but this is the reality of how I use my planner. I use my planner at the end of the day, I write down everything that I did. <laughs> And I know that sounds like cheating. It sounds like, oh, well, you just make it look like, you know, you got everything done on your list, but really you're just writing down the things that you did. 
But for me, it's gratifying to write down everything that I did because it, first of all, it triggers in my mind, oh, is there something that I forgot to do today that needs to get done before the end of the day? But it's just gratifying to see the things that you accomplished because you can really feel defeated given how fast time flies. At least in my case, I feel like, gosh, what did I do today? But if I take the time to remember everything that I did, to recall my day, and just jot down the things that I accomplished, it's very gratifying just writing them down. Even if it's something as simple as like reply to an email, although that is, <laughs> that definitely gets a check when that happens because I do not enjoy emailing and whatnot. <laughs> But those dot markers that I shared with you guys in my July favorites video, definitely if you do any kind of planning or list making, get those. They are the most gratifying things to use. They have just, and they look so nice on paper. Yeah, highly recommend those. Anyways guys, thank you for coming along on this vlog. Don't forget to check out the drop app because it will totally get you a ton of points that you can redeem for gift cards. Um, if you guys enjoy vlogs like this, on the next slide will be my last vlog for you to check out if you want to, you know you do. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.